Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalee's at Dawn. This is Shadow Fury 333, your host, and today we're going to have a match between Icons and Aquanim. And for reference, this is actually the only match I'm going to do today, but it will be a fairly long match. Probably the reason why I'm doing it, the only match today. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit tired, but we will have a match, and it will be this, and it will be on Isle of Grief, and it apparently is going to be pretty interesting. From what I can tell, it's a fairly long match, so I'm assuming they're going to be exploring this map, because this map... It was in the last tournament in September, but the tournament in September... This is one of the few maps that was started on that was actually fairly well tested. A lot of the maps were actually... There were EVO RTS maps that were never really tried in 0k, and that did not go over well. But this map, I think, did okay. However, what I'm curious now is that after the tournament, with more exploration, how people deal with it now. Because this map, as you can see, is very clustered. Much unlike 0k maps. Most 0k maps have a relatively uniform spread of mexes. Nope, this one has a StarCraft style clustering. I believe it's actually based off of a StarCraft map. I've mentioned that before. But this is that style of clustering. We have a few metal extractors near each other and tons of empty space in between. And of course this area here which slows down units. Not something that people necessarily realize during the tournament that this area, this, bo this is a body of water here where it's suddenly discolored. That is shallow water. It slows everything down, and that's very important to bear in mind. Unless you're playing Amphib as Icons currently is, because Amphibious bots don't care. They just treat it as normal ground. Aquanim going for light vehicles might be a little bit challenging, but this map doesn't really punish light vehicles. Light vehicles can go everywhere. Every factory that works on land works on this map. It just goes everywhere. Jump bots work, obviously. Bots work, obviously. Vehicles work as well. That's the more important thing. No area in this map that's bot pathable is not vehicle pathable. So, Icons not really getting scouted out too much, but also not knowing at all what Akinim's up to. Mind you, you can kind of guess, given the size of this map, given the way the metal extractors are distributed, the only thing that needs to be really known is where they're expanding to first. Are they expanding into the water, or are they expanding to the nearby land expansion? Now, Akinim is expanding to the nearby land expansion, not into the water, and Icons, because they're going Amphib, Akinim can probably assume they're going to be expanding into the water, and then very likely over here. However, in either case, it's a good idea to expand in both directions, because that's just more metal. But I think Akinim is probably going to expand down here, and then go over to the center mid, or the west center. Center mid is nothing. But the west center, try to get that expansion, although, I don't know, that's really more Icons expansion. The way this map tends to flow, the, if you can control this water area, it's, it's basically from there a small leap to this expansion. Rakan is going to be a bit harder, and Icons. I'm going to push away a little bit of early raiding, but Rakan hasn't actually gotten any raiding in yet. In fact, Icons hasn't really expanded yet. Icons, however, is raiding hard. Rakan's commander getting in the way. This commander could be in trouble. As it, it is morphed, has the shotgun, which is essentially the counter for the. Well, if scallops are any indicator. If scallops are any good, which actually they're pretty good, shotgun is a decent counter weapon, but it doesn't look like it's going to be relevant. Icons running away. They know what's up, I guess? Those ducks could take that Ravager. They could totally take it. That's what? 200 damage, yeah, 230 damage apiece, so that's about 920 damage. That would two shot the Ravager. Oh, not quite, no, three shot the Ravager. My mistake. The Ravager would survive with 10 health after two shots. But still, that's nothing to be afraid of. Now, this Sky Dust being built up, that is something to be afraid of, and Icons has lost whatever timing they had on the western side. Sorry, the eastern side. The western side, however, they do have an opening. Aquanim does not have any easy way in, and this is what I mean. Icons can lock down this expansion just by putting a few units in this path. Aquanim basically needs to conquer everything up to about here. Aquanim will have a much easier time taking this expansion if they manage to dislodge these ducks. Though they haven't moved to do so anytime soon. Well, Icons has taken the same land expansion and is totally open to take pretty much everything else on their side of the map. They're not at all blocked off. Aquanim, mostly on account of going for heavy Ravagers, which is a little interesting. I guess they weren't really confident in the Scorcher Micro against Ducks, and I don't blame them. Going for Ravagers instead to tank those shots, and that means they cannot raid. And of course, this map being this map, Icons decided to shift, shift over here. Put themselves in a position where their ducks can't really be touched. 
And if you're wondering, this is one of Icon's widgets to remind themselves to make energy. That's not... That's not a comment for acronym. Icon's is telling themselves they need to make more energy. And indeed they do. They have actually been stalling energy. They haven't stalled on metal though, so it's not the most urgent thing in the world. I mean, you don't want to stall on energy, but their metal has not gone over storage. They actually have not been wasting any metal so far. The extra energy will allow them to, as usual, just push more metal. But yeah, the thing is, you don't really need to worry that much when your metal starts to excess or you get to reclaim. Now, that doesn't mean you shouldn't actually be building energy all the time. You should, in case reclaim comes up, to get it as fast as possible. But Ikins, while they did need to make energy, it wasn't that big of a deal. It's... I don't know why I'm really bringing it up. Just worth noting that that actually wasn't a huge problem for Ikins. Especially given their map position right now, they have... Like I said, this... This is all theirs. This and this... Oh, not so much this anymore. They moved away from that. Akronim has is not going to go for that for a while, though. I don't think... Akronim is radar, though. No, Akronim knows. Akronim knows. They've, they know the ducks left. However, the problem is the ducks. And Akronim having to go for a tankier army to deal with this, which... This is a really good composition, I think. Wolverines wouldn't be a bad choice as well, but... Yeah, Slasher, Ravager... I mean, the Ravagers tank shots, and the, Rav and the Slashers just hit. Because the Ravagers can't necessarily accurately hit, but the Ravagers, like I said, they take a lot of shots. They take about nine shots from ducks to kill. And between the three of them, with the re repair that should be happening right now, Akinem, why are you not repairing? I get Reclaim is important, and I agree Reclaim is important, but you're not going to win this without repair. Now you're, you're playing the super heavy side. Oops. You're playing the super heavy side, you're gonna want to repair these. Yeah, Ravager 10 health, that's that's what I mean. That's 8 shots. Knocks them down to 10 health. The yeah, acronym right now is... Well, they're actually in a relatively solid spot if they can keep this ball. Icons right now is essentially pushing against... What is more or less Terran play? Like, if... For anyone who's played StarCraft... This reminds me a lot of Brood War Terran vs. Protoss, where yeah, the Terran player is going with Vultures and Siege Tanks, which, surprisingly, the Vultures analog being Ravager in this case, but, yeah, I mean, they're blocking shots, they're keeping everything alive for the long-range deploy unit against a massively mobile force that's trying to flank them out. I've never actually seen this kind of setup before, where it reminded me so strongly of StarCraft. Normally, most of my analogies I make are to, are to fighting games, because I think that the way that the game works and the way that you change strategies over time is more like the neutral in fighting games, but nope. This is one case, one case where it looks like StarCraft to me. The only difference being that Icons, rather, Icons doesn't have to worry about too much pushing. Akinem isn't pushing too much, but if they get a larger ball, and I realize Scorches would be the, level, the Vulture analog in practice, or not in practice, but in theory, you know, think they'd be the Vulture analog, but in terms of how they're being used, the Ravagers are that analog. The only difference is that Akronim isn't really pushing. They're putting Icons into an uncomfortable position where they can't easily do damage. It's not free anymore. It was free, but it isn't. And Akronim also going for the gunships. It's quite nice. They're going to be sending the Banshees around. Actually, they have sent the Banshees around. I totally missed that. Sending the Banshees around over to the northeast, taking out Icons' economy, Another thing that's putting a lot of pressure on Icon, so Akinem right now in a very solid spot. Not, an, not necessarily advantageous, but they've certainly put themselves in a position where they're not as... Like, they're not behind. They're nowhere near behind, and that that economy attack was pretty effective. However, Icons has a lot in storage, so it's not going to be felt for some time. In fact, Icons isn't even producing enough. This commander really should be helping the factory out. And this moment of truth, the Slashes unfortunately being put in front. The Ravagers need to be blocking for the Slashes, but the Ravagers are not... Which is causing a lot of problems, and that's that's going to destroy this ball, which is what the exact thing Akinem did not want to have happen. That was the exact opposite of what they wanted. They needed that ball alive. They needed the Raptors in front of the Slashers. They needed those Slashers to deal the damage, and they needed the Raptors to eat the damage from Icon's force. And the opposite happened. Akinem does have a strong economy. They will be able to rebuild from that, but they didn't want to lose that ball. Now, one thing I'm a bit surprised Alchemist isn't doing, not too surprised. If they get a crane out from this gunship plant, I'll be more surprised. With a commander, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it, is to basically go for a hard push. Being reminded of the Terran, the old Terran metagame, what you do, of course, 
because Terrans are all about building up and being all fortified, is build up a bunch of missile turrets. Mo mainly because you're worried about errors, but still, in this game, defense turrets are much more powerful overall than they are in StarCraft, so yeah. Setting up a hard push with defense turrets, and Black Dawn getting one shot up before dying. Ouch. And that shot didn't do much good, but yeah, setting up defense turrets. Like, sky dust and such. Sky dust, maybe some defenders. A razor would be overkill, unless they're expecting air, although admittedly, they should expect air because that's what's coming. However, that would be a thing... That'd be a thing to do to just keep this solid. Surprise! I'm not surprised they aren't doing it because that is a commander, but I'm a bit surprised they aren't setting up a crane to do something like that. Icons, however, has... Pr do they have good anti-air coverage? Okay, their main base is fairly well covered. Some of their expansions still aren't very well covered. In fact, their northeast expansion has yet to be rebuilt. Surprisingly, though, Akinem has not expanded to the southeast at all. I mean, they have a Banshee there, which isn't great defense, but at the same time, Icons hasn't attacked there much. Icons could attack there if they wish, though. Yeah, Akinem very focused on the front line. However, I still... just If Akinem had had those, Scorcher, those Ravagers in front... Like, you're playing a body block strategy. It, it's... You gotta be careful with that. And once again, once again, the Ravager's out of position. The Slash is being hit directly by the Ducks. This is going perfectly for Ikens. This is exactly what Ikens wants right now. I mean, okay, sure, they lost a few Ducks. Actually, the placeholder is gonna work nicely. But they don't really have much to synergize with. If they had Levelers, I would agree far more. But Ravagers, while they can now hit, it's still not great. So unfortunately, those slashers are being put in a very awkward position right now. They're far too many slashers are dying. Like those ravagers need to be in front of the slashers at all times, and it's actually not that micro intensive anymore because of the circle guard widget. Just hit the ravager, hit G, select over, and oh, I can't really demonstrate it too well, but you you hit a circle, you draw a circle, and I think you hold Alt and you put your cursor in the direction you want. It's a bit complicated, but the point is that there is a way of doing it. There is a, no a micro a non-micro way of doing it. There's an automated way of doing it. Of course, if you want a micro, that's fine. That's kind of part of the strategy. You kind of have to. At least a little bit. But that's the thing. If It's part of body blocking, is making sure that your bodies actually lock. However, they Icon's Force is gone too, so at least Akin doesn't have to worry about that. They can rebuild, safe in the knowledge that Icon's is also rebuilding. Pretty much from scratch. And both sides rebuilding from scratch. Akinem with that nice, nice Firewalker, providing a bit more space control. They want to have, that, they want to be able to just keep this area to the, this area contested. They don't want to let Icons in. That's the important thing. If Akinem can maintain security here, they just need to expand down here. There's so much metal here. There's eight metal, and they're eight metal down. Their static economy is exactly this much metal down from Icons. They take these expansions. They're on par. Which will become a problem. I mean, they do have this. They do have the Caretaker, which is good. The Caretaker, they have the Reclaim field. They have workers reclaiming. They have the Commander reclaiming. That's wonderful. They should do that. And they're right to do that. But they should also... And they actually are now, finally. Expanding over here. Set up these metal, metal extractors. Get more Static Economy. Reclaim is good. You want to get that. But Static Economy is not something to be overlooked. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that Akram let that go for so long. And now, another fight in here, and the boys becoming a bit more of a problem. No Ravagers to block for that, though the Ravagers will have a slightly harder time. Boys with their rate of fire just would cause problems. However, the Ravagers, they're just there to body block. The Slashers are there to do the damage, but the Slashers are once again in front of the Ravagers. I'm sure Akinem realizes that the Slashers should be behind the Ravagers, and probably kicking themselves for not being able to manage that as well as they could. But that is... That is just a thing that, well, I don't know. I've never seen this strategy used much before. So I don't think it's anything anything to be concerned about in terms of overall acronym skill. I think it's, this is kind of new. They haven't really done this setup. And honestly, what? How? I haven't seen this very much. Like, Ravager Slasher against Ducks? When never does that happen? I can't think of a time when I've seen that happen. It's just... It's not a thing, but now it's a thing. It's, yeah, it's one of those weird things. But body blocking isn't just Ravager Slasher. They're, I mean, it comes up in Shield Ball all the time. 
Although Shield Ball is a bit different, but yeah, it's like any sort of body blocking strategy, there's that little extra bit of micro there to actually body block, but it looks like Aquinum not even going for the body blocking anymore. Pretty much going pure slasher, they've just stopped bothering with the Ravagers. They have a couple that haven't died yet, but everything else is pure slasher. And that's the right choice. Ikens has dropped the ground force almost completely, switching over to a dozen rapiers, or nine rapiers. They had more, but yeah, got a bunch of rapiers. Well, Akronum has a bunch of slashers. Not the best choice. The best choice, of course, being Crasher, but slashers aren't bad. Actually, all things considered, slashers are not that terrible. Because the thing is, Crashers are mobile. Definitely useful against air, against planes. Not necessarily as useful against gunships. Or at least not necessarily as comparatively useful. They're useful, but slashers aren't as much less useful. Right, the, the difference in power between the two, I don't think is as big. However, it's a moot point that the slashers don't actually stop and fire. We'll need to do. Or die. Dying is the other option. I wouldn't recommend it, but it is an option. At any rate, Akronim does have their economy pretty much on track, though. They have gotten these southeast expansions. Ikens is aware of this, though. They're aware of it. Akronim also has not defended it. Another thing Ikens is aware of. And Ikens does have a clear path to those expansions. Which I don't think Akronim is aware of. Which the Ravagers are... Sorry, the Reapers. Rapiers. The Rapiers are about to take. Okay, I guess R is now a problem, too. It used to be just S. I guess I can't deal with unit names that start with R, either. Yeah, the Rapiers are coming in along the south side to get rid of the stuff. And this Stinger will be too little too late. The Banshee as well. If the Tridents come down here, that'll work okay, but... Yeah, that Stinger's not good enough. They need a Razor. But instead, they're going to retreat. Aquinum losing the southeast side, but still, they have the Reclaim Field. From that one big battle, they do have the Reclaim Field, and going for a fourth... Wow. Aquinum just hopping from factory to factory into Air Switch for Thunderbird... Or sorry, for Hawk, sorry. Hawk and Vulture for visibility, so Aquinum sees a lot. They know what's going on. They don't know very much what's going on in the southeast, and actually they're very vulnerable through that direction too. These Rapiers could do a number on the main base. The only saving grace being the main base isn't that big of a deal. Aquinum spread out along the entire southwest side. The main base, while a bit of a problem for energy, is otherwise not that important. And nicely done by Aquinum here. Setting themselves up because Icons really went out of position and forcing those rapiers to eat a lot of shots to get back home. Or almost forcing them. In fact, forcing them to sit on the naive path home. Icons did not go for the slightly more complicated path of going around. Icons is aware of this though, aren't they? Oh no, they're not. That wasn't a radar blind spot. Although they should have seen them moving through the radar. But yeah, the Slashers are actually in a radar blind spot, which kind of makes sense why Icons didn't quite notice that at first. However, like I said, they moved into that position. Icons would have seen that. Bit of an oversight, unfortunately, and that meant all the Rapiers died. If Akronim can take this, that fight would have been totally worth it. And it looks like Akronim's not even going to try. Akronim has learned! For anyone who is not familiar or forgot, some of, my, some of the casts I did a few months ago of Akronim... There were some matches where Akronim just would not reclaim unless they had a Caretaker. Which was a major problem, because Caretakers take about 25 seconds to build for a commander, let alone for a worker. And that wasn't working very well. Especially in a heavily contested area where you basically just get a tiny bit of reclaim. You take what you can get. But yeah, they've been sending workers, they've been sending their commander. This entire game, they've been doing a lot of good reclaim. The way they've been reclaiming has been the way, the best way to reclaim is been aggressive, it's been using whatever's available. They've been, as far as I can tell, relatively safe with it too. But yeah, throwing the crane on there to get what reclaim it can? Doesn't look like it really amounted to much, but still, that sort of, that method of doing it, I think the crane died. But that's the right way to do it, is you want to get what you, take what you can get. Take everything you can get. Let's point it out that Akronim, they've, they've grown there. They've, they have learned to do that, which I'm glad to see. The other thing, of course, is Aquanum loves their Thunderbirds. I don't think I don't think there's anything I've learned recently. I think that's just something they've been loving for a while. But yes, they love their Thunderbirds. And for good reason, because once again, Aquanum in a position where they can basically get back in just by having the army thanks to that. So Aquanum with the air control for the most part. Yeah, it looks like Aquanum is not contesting that. So Aquanum basically has air control. 
And nice placement on this vulture. Got to point out, Akinem basically... They know what's going on with Ikens, and Ikens has no idea that there's a vulture there. It's not the best place to have vision, but hey, it's free vision in a place where they can see the army coming out. That's the important thing. They can see the units streaming out. They can't necessarily see inside the base, so they can't see what's being built, but they can see that stuff's coming out. And that's wonderful. That's something they really need to know. They have the boys set up. That was kind of tough for light vehicles to deal with boys. Which is, of course, why... I don't even jump bots. I don't know. I assume I was doing okay. But it feels like a lot... Of, the Thunderbird's really carrying a lot of the weight. A like, rapier and boy is apparently not the best idea. It's, it's not bad for distracting boys, but it's not great for fighting them. Apparently. Like, that's... Something I was told after the last cast, where I was... One that one match in Dune Patrol where Rapiers kind of won the get won the day from boys. Yeah, that was something that apparently I was mistaken in my analysis on. But Thunderbirds are basically carrying it. Like that's the reason why everything is happening because if the Rapiers can't fight boys, well, it doesn't matter if the boys can't fight back. <laughs> it makes no difference. And Dante coming in to finish the job. Although, Ikens has taken all the static economy. They've really expanded hard. I mean, Akinem basically needs to have that live. If this Sumo dies, that's going to be a blow. If the Rapiers die, that's going to be a blow. And the Rapiers are actually falling behind. The Hawks are doing an okay job. They're trying to get back that air control. But Ikens is contesting it. Might be able to pull it back. I mean, Akinem does have the reclaim, though. But that's basically what they have. The reclaim is what's keeping them even with Ikens. Otherwise, they have this corner and that's it. They have the Thunderbird, they have the Vulture for information, they have the they have the Reclaim field, and they have quite a lot of Reclaim too, and they have a Dante now. But that's that's their assets. Icons, on the other hand, has three quarters of the map. But at this point, as I mentioned before, one of the things I, I've tried to iterate on, or try to reiterate, is that the way advantage works is that you get position advantage by making sure that your opponent can't really contest. So you get economic advantage so that you can get the money to spend on units for military advantage, which allows you to win the game. And also it allows you to maintain positional advantage or acquire positional advantage. But ultimately, units are what wins you the game. You need money to get the units and you need the territory to get the money. This means that if someone gets the territory and the money, but their opponent has all the units, that person with the territory and the money needs to fight through those units first. Now at this point I'd say they're fairly even. Ikens is building units a bit faster than... Ooh. That, was that the only Thunderbird? No, it was not. But yeah, I, it was the second Thunderbird. But yeah, Ikens... Ikens is in an advantageous situation in both cases actually they have the money they have they're getting the army and they're getting a really good angle for an attack in the main base and Akinem on the defensive going for a com not a com drop going for a sumo drop interesting a sumo drop or Dante drop okay double check yeah Dante drop probably into the main base unlike Akinem Ikens has in fact invested heavily into their main base if they lost the main base that would be a massive blow Akinem on the other hand has a fair amount of redundancy along the southwest side Taking any major blows there would probably open them up to further attacks that would win the game for Ikens. But a single attack in the main base would not cripple Aquinum. They would still have a lot of redundancy. They still have power outside of their base, or outside of their main. They have ways of getting out of here. Ikens, on the other hand, does not. And, oh, pointing out, Ikens does not have enough energy to deal with this metal either. And they are starting to excess now. They're still ahead of Aquinum in terms of economy, though. And they're still kind of heading towards the military. This Dante attack is basically the only thing that's going to get Aquinum out of this. Well, that's good defense here. Actually, never mind. No, no, this defense is quite nice. Aquinum able to deal with that without too much issue. But the main base assault, that put, that's put it away. And also, if you're wondering, economy basically means production as well. The two advantages are essentially the same. Yeah, Ikens basically took the territory after they already kind of lost the military war. They won the lightweight military war, Akinem won the heavyweight military war, and also the wind counter has been fixed up. 
Arkham won the heavyweight military war. And that's really they had that they had the advantage already. Icons did not quite deal with what they had to deal with before they could really make their economic advantage pay off. And ultimately, yeah, Akinem took that. I mean, really, Akinem was never really attacked. Icons never got... They got. They just got rid of the Stardust. They never got in. They never really raided. Akinem never took much damage here. And this frontal area, once they took it... I mean, I was mentioning before, this is going to be tough for Akinem to take, but they took it. They set themselves up. This was basically their main base, or the primary base of operations, from about the 10-minute mark in, if not earlier. They were here, and they stuck here. If they had lost this... That would have probably done them in, because they had the reclaim field, they had the commander, they had a couple factories, and it was a, it's a massive opening for the rest of their base. Their main base, not quite as important, and this really was protected by one Stardust, but that was enough. Yeah, Akinem able to win with basically reclaim and strong defensive position. Happened to get enough military, or happened to get enough economy. Although I think the fact that Icons did not build enough energy was a major problem. If they had built enough energy, they would have had about an extra 10, no, extra 13 metal at the end. And with the units they were building, that probably, well, an extra 10 metal for 43 to 56, that's, well, that's an extra 20% units. If they had an army, their army would have been an extra probably five rapiers or so. I mean, the rapiers weren't helping them too much. But overall, they would have had a 20% larger army, and I think that would have been enough to get rid of the Dante to push through. Or at least, it would have given Akinem some pause. The icons, the energy thing is a big deal, and I totally understand that I make that mistake too. It's really understandable. It's, sometimes it's hard to remember to make energy because you're so focused on getting territory, so focused on getting the metal extractors, that you forget about the power plants. But the power plants are huge. Anyway, that's it for me tonight. Sorry if you're disappointed that it's only one match. It's... I think it was a pretty good match, though. I think it was a good demonstration of Isle of Grief. It really showed a slightly different way of looking at it. It showed a very different... I've never seen Life Eagle vs. Ampib play out like that. Maybe I'm just not seeing the right replays, but that... Being reminded of StarCraft that strongly is not something that's happened to me in a while. I'm sure it's happened to me before. But it hasn't happened in a while. Anyway... Thanks again for watching, and have a good night.